My name is Tricia Curtis and uh, I work for Conservation Volunteers as the Regional Program Manager. I look after all of the regional programs across the state and that includes looking after Brookfield Conservation Park. It's the first time that an NGO has uh, undertaken such an exercise and um, it's a great privilege to be able to, uh, to, to do that for the community. Brookfield is unique because it's had quite a long history. It started off with early settlers who ran sheep throughout this area and it became part of a station called Glen Leslie Station. Around the turn of the century, um, they uh, built the homestead here and a family ended up living here, running the sheep. Then by the 1970s, it was acknowledged that it's quite a significant area for the habitat of the southern hairy nosed wombat. And so the Chicago Zoological Society uh, took a great interest and decided to purchase that property off of the existing landholder. After that time, they, they sent lots of researchers over from America um, to undertake research on um, various birds and vegetation and some of the other wildlife here. I work for the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources as their science coordinator. My current role is as a member and advisor from the Friends of Brookfield Conservation Park. Brookfield's quite unique. Uh, in terms of what it has to offer for research. It comprises uh, quite a diverse uh, array of semi-arid habitats and the fact that, that um, uh, those sorts of environments are so close to uh, Adelaide uh, is a huge resource for uh, students uh, and professionals to study how these systems work. My name is Allison Johnson. I'm a graduate student at the University of Chicago and I'm working out here with my uh, advisor Steve Pruitt-Jones on the splendid and variegated fairy wrens. Uh, my name is Stephen Pruitt-Jones. I'm a professor at the University of Chicago in the United States and I'm a research scientist and have been working at Brookfield Conservation Park since 1992. But the importance of Brookfield from a scientific perspective is twofold. Approximately two-thirds of the park was set aside as a research area so the public can gain access to on the nature drives and picnic areas approximately one-third of the park, but then two-thirds of the park are off-limits and are devoted to long-term research projects. It's also um, a great spot in terms of bird conservation. Um, this area has a lot of um, species that are uh, both migratory and non-migratory and uh, associated with both the riverland uh, as well as this dense Mali area. This site is particularly valuable because you can set up long-term experiments. There is modest accommodation here at the research camp and um, it's a great place to work. The facilities here at Brookfield Conservation Park that are, are um, supported by funding that uh, CBA receives uh, are vital to uh, the success of scientific research here. The conservation volunteers uh, uh, have assumed uh, responsibility for managing the park on behalf of uh, South Australia and the South Australian government. They bring uh, volunteers and uh, energy to understand and manage uh, uh, conservation issues and threatening processes on the park and in the region as a whole. I'm Jessica Strauss, I'm doing a PhD on the southern hairy nose wombat in the Murray lands of South Australia. It, it is a, an area where you can readily see the southern hairy nose wombat. Volunteers can come up and you know do weeding for my stuff as well, the work that I do and I do field trips and things. We're always looking for volunteers. You can get um, field experience, field work, come out here, learn pit fooling techniques, weeding, just getting to know the fauna and flora of the area and it will help you with your knowledge basis for wherever you go, being able to identify species and stuff like that. You know, they get the benefit of being out there and seeing what's there, a chance of seeing wombats and other species and, and learning a bit more about the park. The importance of Brookfield is to engage the community and that's at all levels, so whether that's the scientific community uh, or the general public who are coming in to have a look at it. So, um, you know, it's engaging people in um, community science. Um, CBA's vision uh, for managing and uh, uh, leasing the park is to make it uh, a, an example uh, within Australia of an NGO uh, being able to manage the resources for the community. It's a park that will contribute um, 
quite substantially to research about all sorts of things, not just about the Southern Hairy Nose Wombat, and also a park that means that uh, the community can assist in that. So they become citizen scientists. So anybody can become a scientist just for a day or for a week. That's what I love about Brookfield, that you get to play a part in that.